This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and piece together what we discussed in the previous video with this example. Uh, so it wants us to look at how we account for this sale and lease back uh, in the financial statements. Uh, if this office building were sold at its fair value of 10 million. And then in part A, the performance obligations are not satisfied. So in part A, there is no sale. Whereby in part B, there is a sale. Okay, because the accounting treatment for each is different, isn't it? <laughs> So it says here, uh, Apple required funds to finance a new ambitious rebranding exercise. Uh, it's only possible way of raising finances through the sale and lease back. OK, so effectively, Apple, this company needs finance. It is going to be the seller. Lessee, it's going to sell it generate the funds and then lease it back to carry on using it. It's, it's a head office building. Uh, that's going to be there, is it, for a period of 10 years. Uh, the lease payments are $1 million uh, and they are at the end of the lease period. Okay. Uh, the fair value is $10 million, and we, we have sold it, haven't we, at its fair value. We'll look afterwards if we don't sell it at fair value. Carrying value of the asset is 8.4. So that is what it is currently at within the books. Uh, and the interest rate implicit in the lease is there. Is it at 5%? Okay. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, well, let's go through that and look at is it the first scenario, part A, uh, whereby there is no sale. Okay. Uh, we're really only focused in what happens with regards to the seller lessee, which is Apple. Okay, so if that's the case, uh, Apple have not actually sold this transaction. They're just entering into the transaction to, to raise finance. Okay, it's like a loan secured on the asset. So what they will go through and do that uh, is that they will recognize the head office asset at, is it the $8.4 million, its current carrying value, and they will carry on depreciating. So if it's I don't know, maybe 10 years left, potentially. Uh, depreciate it over 10 years or whatever you've been depreciating it over previously. Uh, then what you've got as well uh, is you've got the proceeds and therefore those proceeds will be debiting the bank and then you will record a liability at, is it the 10 million? Okay, because here you have no sale. Uh, and what you have, more importantly, is that the sale is at fair value. OK, so you recognize the asset and depreciate it, record the liability, and then that will be there, won't it? 10 million. And then some form of amortized cost. OK. There we go. Uh, so that's reasonably straightforward. The, the challenge is part B, uh, whereby you have a sale. Uh, remember, we're still carrying on here, aren't we, with the same scenario. So the sale is at fair value. And again, we are looking at the treatment. of the seller lessee. So in this instance, it's Apple that's looking to raise the finance and therefore 
uh, is going to sell the asset and then lease it where there has been a sale. Okay, so what we're going to go through and do here is we are going to go through that under the terms of the standard. We need to de-recognize the asset, uh, record the assets uh, as a right to use asset, record the liability uh, and work out that gain on transfer. Okay, so what have we got? Well, first of all, I would record the proceeds. So if you're going through there and recording the proceeds, you are going to debit the bank. Is it there with? The 10 million. Okay. There we go. Debit bank with 10 million. Uh, what I would then go through and do that uh, is I would then go through and de recognize the asset because there has been a sale. Okay. Uh, so therefore, that asset needs to go. So we credit the asset with the 8.4 million. Okay. Uh, we then need, as part of the lease back, we need to lease back the asset, don't we? So we need to go through there uh, and record the liability. Don't even worry about it balancing just yet. <laughs> Get the easier bits. Remove the asset, record the proceeds, recognize the liability. Okay. Well, the liability is going to be there, isn't it, at present value? Uh, and I did contemplate giving you the present value. Uh, but I just thought, right, let's just demonstrate how to calculate it in case you're interested. Uh, so to work out the present value, you take your cash flow and you multiply it by an annuity factor. OK, because you have a series of constant annual cash flows, don't we? Uh, what we have here is the cash flows are in arrears. They are made at the end of the lease period. So you need to go through there and look at an annuity factor from 1 to 10. That is at 5%. You can try and work that out if you want, or you can just go through there and have a look at your tables. So the lease is there at 1 million in arrears. And if you round it to 3 decimal places it's 7.722 okay uh, if you then tap that on your calculator and i've done it using the full answer on my calculator you get 72 or 7721 735 okay so that's the the present value of the lease so once i've got that i will credit the liability with the seven seven two one seven three five. Excellent. So I've got the money in, I've recorded it. I've got rid of the asset, I've recorded that. Uh, the asset is slowly coming back to me, so I've recorded the liability. And then when it comes back, because I am leasing it and I therefore have control over this asset. We need to recognize that is it the right of use asset? So you will need to debit your asset. Now, ideally, you would recognize the asset at the same value as what you've recorded the liability at. But the issue that you've got here is that you've transferred 
some of the rights to that asset to the lessor, the, the, the company that has bought it. So we only really want to look at the rights that we have kept hold of. So what we want to go through there and do is to look at a separate working. Uh, because what we've got here is that if you look at the total liability or the, the total proceeds. Let's write that in there. Careful. If we look at the total proceeds. Is it the. Of 10 million. Uh, if we go through that and look at the liability, so that's effectively what we've retained at 7721735, isn't it? We've, we've sold it for 10, but we've leased it back, and what we've retained is the 7721, okay? Which is then saying that the rest... Has been transferred, hasn't it? At two, two, seven, eight, two, six, five. Okay. Now, what we've got there is that the previous carrying value was 8.4 million. So we want to recognize what we've retained based upon the original carrying value that we had. Okay. Because if we recognise it at the 7721735, we're, we're, we're basing it upon its fair value as opposed to what we had it in our books at. Okay, And effectively, even though the asset has been sold, it's now come back to us, hasn't it? And we don't want to, to recognise more than, than what we should. Okay, So what you've got here effectively is 7721 out of 10 million. Is that 77.22%? And if we take 77.22% of the 8.4 million, that gives me 6486257. Okay. So it is that 6486257 over which we have retained as the right of use of the original asset, okay, that was held within our books, not the right of use that we've retained in relation to the value of the transaction, but the value of the original asset. So 6486 247, 247, 257. So you've got the, let me get the right number, 6486. 257. So was it there? Did we recognize? Was it, I think, about 77.22%? Because that's what we retained. Once you've then just done that, you can then work out is it the gain or loss? On the transfer. And that, quite simply, is just a balancing figure. I think if you work it through, you should find that you have a credit. A credit of the 364522. And that credit goes to statements of profit or loss. And credits are good within the statement of profit or loss. So that there is a gain. OK, there we go. So you've got the entire journal entry there. Yeah, debit the bank, credit the asset, credit the liability. I think up to there, I think you'd be able to do that. You could debit the bank, credit the asset, credit the liability. I think after you've done a few questions, and I can't really see there being all that many questions in the study text or the revision kit because it's just, just bonkers. OK. Uh, then you can work out the value of the asset based upon the original carrying value. And then you've just got that balancing figure at the end as the gain. 
Okay. There we go. Uh, you know, if, if it was to crop up, how would I envisage it being seen in financial reporting? Uh, it depends on, on how evil the examiner wanted to be. You know, if they wanted to be really evil, they could ask you, uh, what is the value of the right of use asset in this sale and lease back transaction whereby there is a transfer of the asset has given rise to a sale? You know, so it would actually be looking at that part there but you know you're just working out the percentage of the proceeds uh, based upon the present value of the liability and you're not going to have to calculate the present value of the liability in an exam question at this level you'd be given the numbers and you just have to play around with it and apply it to the proceeds uh, and then once you've applied the present value of the lease payments the proceeds to work out the percentage apply that percentage is it there to the 8.4 million okay so here was it 8.4 million multiplied by the 77.2 percent okay there we go excellent